Many of us have been thinking to ourselves, has church been canceled? Others have been texting. Folks have been sending in messages. Is the church doors going to be open? And I have not yet, but decided that, that we as the people of God are called to be the people of God. That in a time, in a moment of testing, that we were called to be the very people that God has called us to be. And so we're thinking about the message. Do we continue in the messages of the body of Christ or do we meet the people and all of those who are out there who are going to hear this message where they are at? And the answer was yes. We are going to meet the people where they are. And so as we prayed and thought about the word of God for today, we are going to be hearing from a handful of people who God has given them a word to minister to you both dads and moms, pastors, leaders in our community that have received a, a download, a spiritual download from the Lord that is for you to encourage you, to encourage us in our faith. And if you came here today, it's because you believed in your heart that God was calling you to live by faith and not by fear. In the midst of what the world is, is being inundated with right now, with with the news, every news channel is just propagating fear, death, proclaiming destruction, right? Making predictions of all these kinds of things. But as my wife mentioned at the first service this morning, we do not subscribe to the report of the world, but we subscribe to the report of our God. We are called to be the people of God, to live out the word of God. Can I hear an amen? Can I get a little help from our keyboardist right now? Amen, amen. This is Brother Jonathan here on the keyboard. Everybody say hi, Jonathan. Praise God. And so these people that are going to come and, and, and bring the word of God to us, guess what? Each has a different theme that they're going to bring. And that theme is going to meet so many different people right where you are. Should we be afraid? Is it biblical to be afraid? Or as a Christian, should I shrink or should I stand forward? But I was coming to church this morning with my son, Elisha, and we jumped on the freeway and there was no traffic. And I said, look, son, we are going against the grain. There are not many people that are on their regular routines or headed to church or, or doing whatever they got to do this morning, but we're going to the house of God where God has called us to be the people of God. He said, God has called us to be the anointed, those who are going to live by faith, all right, and not by sight, not by what we see. We are not going to be paralyzed by fear at all, but we're going to go and we're going to open the, the doors of the house of God so that the people of God can come and praise and, and, and live in victory and be full of, of confidence and be filled up by the word of God and to, to be victorious. Amen. Can I hear an amen? amen? And to not allow everything that has been going on around us to grip us, to cause us to shrink. So we're going to start like this. Everybody take a deep breath. I'll give it to the Lord. Ah, you needed that, didn't you? God sent David to the front lines of battle. Just close your eyes right now. Just listen to this little story. And David was on an errand to deliver pizza to his brothers, bread and cheese. The father said, take this food to your brothers who are on the front lines of war and see about their well-being and bring me back a report of how they're doing and what they're doing. And David was obedient, was on his errand. He got to the battle lines and he saw that the army of God 
was trembling in fear. Their teeth were chattering. Their knees were shaking. They were shaking in their boots because there in the valley of Elah stood a giant nine feet tall with armor from head to toe. They say his shield was as large and heavy as anything Israel had ever seen. Goliath's sword looked like a javelin. It was so long and big and heavy. And Goliath had challenged the the army of Israel to send a worthy champion, a warrior to come and fight him. And nobody would. So David asked, why hasn't anybody met his challenge? And they responded, can't you see? The champion fighter of the Philistines is standing before us who has never lost a battle. David said, far be it from me that I should remain silent and fall in with the ranks of the army of God and remain terrified. But let me go and select five choice stones from the creek. The scripture says that David went down to the, a babbling creek and he selected five stones. The first stone, he reached into the creek and felt it in between his fingers was the stone of victory. And he put it in his satchel. He reached down again and he grabbed the second stone. The stone of faith. And he put it in his satchel. He reached down and picked up a third stone, the stone of peace. Somebody say peace. He put it in his satchel. He reached down again and grabbed yet a fourth stone and said, ah, yes. This is the stone of promise. And he put it in his satchel. And the last one, he reached down and picked up a stone that was standing out among the rest. And he says, this, this one's the key. This is the, the stone of life. And he placed it in his satchel and he went out there. And scripture says when he looked at the giant, he didn't just wait there. He didn't strategize. He ran out to him to meet him. He says, yea, who defies the army of the Lord, behold, be prepared to be slain right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of my God. For nobody shall declare victory over us. There comes moments and times in life where there are giants that stand before us. And right now we're facing a major giant around the globe. But how will you as a Christian, here's the, here's the application, the question. How will you as a Christian choose to face your giant, this giant, this giant of terror, this giant of, of anxiety, worry, this, this, this giant of panic, this giant of terror, this giant of end of world proportions, this giant who has people fighting in lines and stores all over the place. It's also a reminder to us as parents how will we model and demonstrate to our children how to be people of faith in these, in these kinds of moments? So we're in the middle of a test. How will you face that test? It will be how our children will model the kind of faith that we actually have. So when I think about that, what kind of faith do I want to model for my children? I say, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be full of faith going to be afraid I'm not going to for yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of, it's we are passing through 
We ask the kinds of questions, is it okay to be fearful? You know what, sometimes we have natural tendencies. It's natural to have an emotion of fear. But at that moment, it's when we step out in faith and says, I rebuke that spirit of fear. I rebuke that spirit of oppression, that spirit of panic right now in the name of Jesus. And so in these next few moments, I pray that you will get a glimpse and that you will be reminded as we hear from many others how they are approaching this affair, this moment, this situation. And may we be taught, may we be instructed by the word of God on how we are to, to be the people of God in this great moment. So to begin, I'd like to invite Pastor Koba to start us off, followed by Pastor Bev Mason. Then the couple Robert and Desi Chavez will come and share, followed by my wife who will be closing us out in prayer. We're going to be singing a song unto the Lord. This is how I fight my battles. Get ready. Get ready. We're about to sing a song of victory. We're about to sing a song of faith. We're about to proclaim and sing a praise of Judah, a praise of worship unto God, not being a defeated people, but being a people who are called to Jesus. Pastor Koba. Amen. I want to read um, a few verses from Matthew 8 because I do believe that um, we're, the situation that we're currently in is uh, one that feels like, looks like, sounds like a storm and we have biblical references to storms and we also have biblical instructions as to how we are to behave in the middle of a storm. Um, so let's look at what we read in Scripture and Matt over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. Did you catch that, church? Right, so a storm came, big waves on the lake. Jesus was sleeping, verse 25. He must have been a hard sleeper, right? Next time when you're having a hard time resting at night, you could just say, Lord, give me the kind of rest that you got in the boat. <laughs> Because if you could sleep through the middle of a storm, and some of us in here are light sleepers, so we could just say, Lord, help us. Verse 25, the disciples went and woke him up, saying, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. And he replied, you of little faith, why are you so afraid? Listen to the words of Jesus, church. You of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and he rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and they asked, what kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. And we look at that passage and we're reminded, in the middle of a storm, first thing to think about is, who's in the boat with you? First thing to think about is in the middle of a storm is are you in the right boat and who's in the boat with you? If the disciples knew that the King of Kings, the Alpha and the Omega, the Living Word, the Logos, the Son of God, if the, if the disciples knew that they were dealing with the one by whom and through whom all things have been created, then they might have thought twice before they started panicking when they realized that the one who created waves is taking a nap in their boat. The one who created wind and rain the one who carved out that little lake called the Sea of Galilee was actually in the boat with them. If they remembered who was with them, then they would have been less focused on the circumstance and more focused on the, the God who was in the boat with them, whose name is Jesus. And Jesus said, come on, why are you acting so scared, disciples? Right? First of all, number one, if you're a fisherman, you better know how to swim. So why are you acting scared? Right? Like, come on, man. If all people... This fisherman need to know how to swim. If you get thrown overboard, you're going to be all right. If things don't land the way you thought they were going to go over the course of this week and month, guess what? First of all, it doesn't surprise God. Secondly, right, we know that if we're in the boat with Jesus, then we're going to be okay. Right? Um, and, and so I think oftentimes we have a tendency of making more of a situation than what it actually is. It, the, the, the word is called catastrophize. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not belittling in our current situation. I'm, I'm not saying it's not significant. I'm saying it is significant. But we also trust in a big God. Okay? We also trust in a big God who is with us and who has been with us. 
He has gotten us through some storms before and we're in the middle of a storm. So without belittling the current situation, what we are saying is don't make it, don't turn it into something, right? Because of our fear, because of our worry, because of our, our tendency uh, for paranoia or our tendency to, uh, to feel like we need to have some kind of reaction to what's going on. I wanna challenge the body of Christ to have the confidence of Christ in this season who takes a nap in the bottom of a boat during the middle of a storm. Church, how could we model that for a crazy world right now who's looking to the people of faith, to the faith community, to the people of God to see how are they reacting and responding? Are we doing the same thing that they're doing? Romans 12 says this, don't be conformed to what everybody else does. Romans 12 gives us clear instruction. Don't, don't do what everybody else does because you're not like everybody else, but you have a renewed mind. You have a renewed heart. You have a different kind of faith and trust that somebody without God might not have. So how do we live demonstrating that I believe that what I'm anchored to is firm and solid and his name is Jesus and it's gonna be all right. So the people of God can be a calming presence in this season, but we can't be if we're contributing to the hysteria. I like what, uh, what, what our, uh, our young adult ministry uh, uh, Instagram posted earlier, which said, be chill and know that he is God. Because he's, he's God. He's good. He's in control. Amen. The, the, the next thing I want to just simply share is, um, is we, we've decided to come together, but that doesn't mean that churches who've decided to go online have less faith in us. So let's make sure we have that clear so that we don't walk around thinking we're better than anybody because we have in-person church today. Who knows? We might be th praying through, thinking through the situation, and there might be a, a moment in the coming weeks where we have to make a decision. So let's not get into a place of judgment or thinking that we're better than others because we're gathered together in person. Does that make sense? What I want to throw in there is this. If there is anybody in here who has uh, immunocompromise, you may be taking medication and it's caused your immune system to be a little bit weakened, you may want to prayerfully consider whether or not you should join us via online next time um, because we want to make sure that our people are safe. Having faith and doing things to make sure you're safe do not need to be uh, rivals with each other. Does that make sense? Um, and, and so I want to encourage us to let's be wise. In fact, there's four things that I want to encourage us with. And then I, I want to make sure we have opportunity to hear from a few others who have word of encouragement for us. The first thing is this, fear not and take courage. The second thing is this, pray that God would have mercy on our land. Pray that God would have mercy on us because some people are sick, right? And none, none of us in here are. If you are, you shouldn't have come here this morning. You crazies should have stayed home. If you have coronavirus, do not come to church. We will pray for you over the phone. I will, I will get like 10 people together in tongues. We will be praying hard. We will anoint the iPhone. Okay, but, but let's be smart. Amen? We're the body of Christ, okay? But we got to look out for one another. So pray that God would have mercy on us because there are some folks who this matter is not just a, an issue of something that's over there. There are some places where this matter is their current reality in their own home in their own experience. And so we want to keep those folks in prayer um, because it's not easy to go through something like this. Amen. Along those lines, I want to throw this one in there as well. Some people have noted that there have been others who have, uh, for whatever reason, started treating people badly because maybe they're like of Asian American descent or they look like they might be Chinese and all of a sudden people are starting to avoid or treat them a certain way. And what I would say is that's not acting like the body of Christ. So let's not take this as an opportunity to mistreat anybody um, and simply declaring just because uh, of what they look like that we're going to uh, allow ourselves to mistreat people. That's not the body of Christ. So let's pray. First thing is fear not, take courage. Second is pray that God would have mercy on us. Thirdly is be wise, don't be careless. Be wise, don't be careless, okay? Um, wash your hands, do all that stuff, right? Um, let's, let's be smart. And then the fourth thing that I want to share is be part of the solution. Be part of the solution. So let me, let me just kind of wrap up my, my few thoughts with that. When I think of Jesus, 
Uh, let me just give a few examples. I wish I had time to dive in and give you every example, but when I look at the life of Jesus, Jesus went toward people with leprosy. Jesus went toward the blind, toward the lame, toward the woman with an issue of blood, toward a dead child, toward a dead man named Lazarus, toward the demon-possessed and to those who are generally sick. When everybody else walked away, Jesus went toward. In fact, Jesus tells us a story about the Good Samaritan, which is a story that uh, a couple of religious people walked around this person who was beaten up and lying for dead on the side of the road. And yet the Good Samaritan, which Jesus protagonizes, is the one who actually went toward. And you have to understand that that wasn't just a health situation or even a social situation, but spiritually in those days, you were not allowed to interact with any of the categories that I just mentioned. You would have to leave them alone and let them do their own thing. Sequester them. Leave them al- let them fend for themselves in leper colonies and let them fend for themselves in isolation. And, and they would just it, religiously, not just physically and medically, but religiously they were, uh, they were commanded to stay away from and avoid sick people. And what I would say here is, uh, if we are called after the name of Jesus, as we pray about this season and situation that we're in, rather than being part of the hysteria and rather being part of those who simply go into their retreats, um, let's be praying and saying, God, how might you want us to be your hands and feet during this time as well? Since we don't operate out of fear, but we do operate out of faith, then God, how would you allow us to, in faith and with courage and confidence, ask how we might be part of your hands and your feet during a season when people are, 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 are getting ready to run for the hills? Amen? So those four things I want to leave you with, and we'll, uh, we'll get ready for another word of encouragement. Number one is fear not and take courage. Number two is pray that God would have mercy on us. Number three is be wise, not careless. And number four is be part of the solution and not the hysteria. Amen? Thank you, Pastor. Awesome word. Awesome word. Now I'd like to invite forward Pastor Bev Mason, who has served here faithfully at this house for 25 years. She's going to come forward, and she's been in prayer um, this last week and asking God to give her scriptures as she um, enters in and intercedes on behalf of the people of God. Let's put our hands together for one of our counselors, one of our pastors, Pastor Bev Mason. So, Pastor Koba, I'm going to be wise. (laughs) And I just, uh, I call on the releasers to pray me through on this, okay? Okay. Here we go. The president has declared a national day of prayer. And I am so grateful that we as a nation are calling upon the Lord because only he can make sure that families have food, money, jobs, only he can pull this mess together and out of it come victory. And there is a gathering on the phone tonight at 5 o'clock Pacific time when even many ministries are coming together on the phone to continue to pray over the nation and the world. And um, I do have the phone number if anybody wants to join in. I did bring it with me, and I'll be happy to give it to you. Oh, yes. Right up at the top. Okay. Thank you. I 
I don't think that you just started praying over all of us. I believe you have been praying for us. I know that I have. And just like you, I have been praying Psalm 91 over all of you. Amen. But I notice that every time, and I've been, the Lord's had me pray this for a long time over this church and over Southern California, that I stop at he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Because I have to stop and remember that some people think that they may be dwelling in the secret place of the Most High, but really are not. They know the Lord Jesus Christ, but so does the devil. And that's where I stop and I pray for the salvation of everyone so that they too may be a part of being in the secret place of the Most High. Those in Christ and in Christ only dwell in the secret place of the Most High God and abide under the shadow of his wing. There has been <clears throat> a statement that has just been in the back of my mind ever since I heard it. And I heard it originally when we were doing the women's Bible study. And uh, we were uh, learning about David. In 2 Samuel 24... David is dealing with a plague. And I read recently a ministry stating the plague stops at the threshing floor. And that just stirred an interest in me because later David was to build an altar on that floor and sacrifice. Solomon then built the temple of God on that place. And this is what interested me too. Some say it is where Abraham was to sacrifice his son. And some say it is where God actually sacrificed his son. So I say to you that the plague stops at the blood. It stops at the blood of Jesus. Okay. Thank you. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verses 1 through 30, Jehoshaphat had to face a very overwhelming army. And he went before the Lord with his people. And the Lord advised him, told him, to praise and worship, bring your praisers out first. So, I want to encourage you as we're, well, always, but as we're going through this, just praise and worship God. When you think that fear has come upon you, you just stop and you just praise and thank God because maybe you don't see it. But he is moving, and he is working on your behalf. You know it to be true. So I encourage you to thank the Lord, praise, worship, and music. Also, I encourage you to consider 
taking communion daily. Um, it is something that the Lord has prompted me to do and others. And what it does is it reminds us of what happened that day on the cross. Galatians 3.13 says, that day Jesus became the curse. And I think COVID-19 would be considered a curse so that we could have the blessings of Abraham. And so I encourage you. You know, they do have those little communion package of things that you can order and they'll deliver them. Okay. And these are thoughts that came to me while I was praying for what God wanted me to, to bring to you today. 1 Peter 2.9, he wanted me to remind me and you, and you listening via the internet, that you are a chosen people. You are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God that we may declare, we're declaring with our mouth, the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his glorious light. Okay. Thank you. So, because the Lord has been really showing me the power of the royal priesthood that you are. Whether you feel like it or not, it is by faith that you take that. And so I want to remind you that in Ephesians 6, I want you to remember to get your shield up and get your sword ready. The shield's going to stop those darts that scare you and say, well, what about this? What about that? And that sword is going to say, this is what the Lord says about that. And you will be, because you are declaring out of your mouth from the royal priesthood, the word of God. Well, I sensed that the Lord wanted me. I thought about us doing it together but maybe you can just receive it, say it to yourself, because I had, I uh, looked for in my paperwork for um, a, a declaration over God's people. And so I'm going to do just what the Lord did. He spoke to things that weren't as though they were, and they became. I would like to declare over you these promises. And so here we go. And I remember Pastor Josh saying this last Sunday, you are the head and not the tail. All right. Okay. You grow in favor with God and man. You will be an owner and not just a renter or a tenant. You will be healthy and whole in every way, mind, body, soul, and spirit. And by the way, I want to just give him acknowledge him. Uh, I took this from Pastor Ben Lim, whom you know, a, a prophet and pastor of, uh, in the church. Every part of your being is covered by the blood of Jesus. All sickness and infirmity and disease 
will be a far away from you and your family. You will be a lender and not a borrower. You have more than enough, for he is El Shaddai. Your whole entire family will be saved. Whatever you commit to the Lord will prosper. You will walk as a sign and a wonder in this earth. You are surrounded by the Lord of hosts and by the hosts of heaven. Every single one of your gifts will be activated, mature, and effective in Jesus' name. You are a great soul winner. You will continually have clear vision, insight, hindsight, and foresight. foresight. And I believe, oh, just a couple more. And I, when I say this, I think of the crowds that have been out there and how their behavior has been. And I know that's the first reaction of people, but we are a royal priesthood. So we are very generous people. We are humble, genuine, giving, present, loving, serving, patient, understanding kind, compassionate. We walk in the Spirit and we have wisdom and discernment. Lastly, you are a beloved child of God and nothing can ever separate you from His love for you. Amen. Thank you. My son Elisha is going to help you down. He's going to be, he's in, he's, in, he's in training to be a young knight, a gentleman. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's give Pastor Bev a great big round of applause. How many of you say, I receive God's word over my life? So everybody say, I receive God's word of life over me in Jesus' name. Praise God. Put your hands together. Put your hands together. Pastor Koba ministered peace and confidence. Pastor Bev ministered wisdom over the house of God and life over the people of God. We're going to hear from a young couple right now. We're going to go ahead and just switch up that, that, that rhythm right now. We're going to, um, everybody stand up in your seat right now. Stand up. Put your hands together. We're going we're gonna to move a little bit to uh, in the river. We're going to move into the river. Go ahead and just put your hands together. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on, people of God. Yeah. Somebody say, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to invite Robert and Desi Chavez. They're going to come and minister to us right now. Let's invite up Robert and Desi Chavez. They are cell group leaders. They're a young couple who are on fire for God. They've been ministering the word of God. The Lord has been using them. Others have been coming to know Jesus because of their testimony, because of their ministry. And I can't wait to hear how God has been using you guys to bring you through this whole time right now. Amen. Put your hands together for Robert and Desi Chavez. Uh, good afternoon, church. Uh, it's good to be in the house of the Lord, right? So during this uh, time of this coronavirus, my family and I, we're a family of prayer. I do Royal Rangers on Wednesday nights with the, with the boys, and I always tell the boys, I'm a man of prayer. And whether they like it or not, we're praying. Uh, so prayer is powerful. Prayer is very powerful. Uh, I want to share a scripture with you. 
if my phone will rotate. <laughs> the scripture is from the book of Second Chronicles, chapter seven. Second Chronicles, chapter seven, is when, uh, if you remember that Solomon, when Solomon was finished building the temple, the Lord appeared to him and he said a number of things. But the verses that stood out to me was chapter thirteen. I mean, I'm sorry, verse thirteen. And it says, at times I might shut up the heavens so that no rain falls or command grasshoppers to devour your crops or send plagues among you. Then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will give, forgive their sins and restore their land. Now, I'm not saying this coronavirus. I'm not, I don't think that the coronavirus is from God. Because we, we all know God is a loving God, okay? But what I am saying is that during this time, what this, vibe, what this verse is telling me is that God is going to use this coronavirus to draw people to him. He's going to draw people to him, the people that don't know him. And it's up to us, church, to intercede on them people that don't know Jesus, to intercede on their behalf and fall to our knees in prayer. Fall to our knees in prayer and, and cry out to the Lord for the ones that don't know him. For the ones that don't know him in the time, the ones that are fighting in lines at the store. Now, I don't know. Some of them might be Christians. <laughs> but, you know, you know, you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying, church. But what I am saying, church, is that as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to pray. We're going to pray through this. My five-year-old is an anointed prayer warrior. My five-year-old is an anointed prayer warrior. Not my five-year-old. That's the Lord's five-year-old. So forgive me for saying that. So at this time, I'm going to just turn the mic over to my beautiful wife here, and I know she has an anointed word for you guys. <laughs> um, I would have to say that um, prayer is, it is like the number one thing in our house because prayer is the reason we're standing up here together. Amen. Um, prayer has got us through plenty of storms. Um, and that we've learned, I'm the type of person before, I used to like think, uh, be in control, fix everything, find the solution. And sometimes I just feel like, man, like why do I have to always do this? Why do I do that? But finally, I, I figured I don't have to do that. And that's not my job. It's the Lord's job. He's the one who, who is in control of everything. My job is to just trust in him, to continue to pray and just believe in him. And so, you know, Pastor Bev was talking about uh, Psalms 91, and through this time, the one thing that stood out in Psalms 91 is, this I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust him. For he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly diseases. And I believe that because God's word is the truth. That's right. So I'm not going to, you know, people are all panicking. I'm kind of like, why aren't I scared? You know, I'm kind of just like, I'm not really. I mean, we got to be wise and be careful. But it's because I trust in God. I trust that, you know, that he, we're going to be okay. You know, it's kind of a, it's, I think it's a time where he's going to, he's trying to slow us all down. Yes. Slow us all down so that we could take a moment to, to look to him, to maybe just be still, just be still. Um, and that some people would just seek his word and, and um, that people would gain faith. I believe that people that didn't know Christ before, through this time, they're going to know Christ. That's right. That's right. So just as a, you know, he said, in our house, we're going to continue to pray. As a church, we're going to continue to pray and trust uh, in God and that God's will be done. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you guys for coming to share. Come on, you guys, put your hands together for him. Bless God. It's great to hear from the people of God, from the sheep, um, of how they're responding in the face of this, and you're not just up here listening to a pastor who's saying, you got to believe, and you got to have faith, you know, and, and to live is Christ and to die is gain. And, and no matter what happens, just hold on to God and then go to your grave and, and just try and, and have blind faith. No, but God wants us to hear from people in the, the church, in the body of Christ that are also living with faith and that also believe that God has called us to be a victorious people. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Go ahead, put your hands together. Praise God. We're going to sing this song. 
This is how I fight my battles. And, um, and we're going to enter into that time of praise and victory. And at the end of the song, my wife is going to come up. And God has just has an anointing over her life that has just been um, being distributed throughout the body of Christ and utilizing that great instrument that, um, that she has become for the people of God. And so during this song, I want to invite you to open your mind, open your heart, and open your eyes to what God is calling us to as a people. I want you to listen to the words of this song and, and apply the words of this song into your life. And, and, and as we're going to go out from, from these four walls to be the very body of Christ, to be the church, and to be the answer. Somebody say, we are the answer. And you are the answer in Jesus' name. You have the power. You have the victory when you proclaim it in Jesus' name to cast out every impure spirit, cast out demons of fear, of anxiety, of worry, of panic that is trying to come into your home, come into your life. You are casting out every spirit of fear, every demonic every impure thought that is trying to come into your mind, you are going to resist that in the name of Jesus because God didn't call you to live like that in front of your children. God didn't call you to live like that in the world, but God has called us to be in the world, but what? Not of the world. Church, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Come on, worship team. Come on, worship team. Start making some noise. Come on, worship team. Come on, people of God. Get ready to live for God and to sing a song of praise in Jesus' name. And this is how I fight my battle. Yeah. That's what we're going to declare right now. Yes, this is how I fight my battles. Come on, stir up your spirit in Jesus' name. And this is how I fight my battles. Yeah, come on. My weapon come on, is Levi. a melody. This is how I fight my battles. That singing may look like I'm surrounded. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded. But I'm surrounded by you It may look like I'm surrounded But I'm surrounded It may look like It may look like I'm surrounded But I'm surrounded by you Lift up your voice It may look like I'm surrounded But I'm surrounded by you For this is how I fight my battles This is how I fight my battles this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This, this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I it may look like it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm Fight your battles, this church. Is how, I fight my battles. how are you gonna choose to fight this your battles? Fight my battles. Hallelujah. This is how I you gotta make a decision. This is how I fight my battles. How are you gonna fight? This is how I fight my battles. Hallelujah. This is how I fight my battles. First of all, you gotta choose to fight. Second of all, you choose how you're gonna fight. What weapons of warfare do you have access to in your own life? This is a wake-up call for the church. Hallelujah. Start to build up your armory. He's giving you prayer. He's giving you praise. He's giving you worship. He's giving you the Holy Spirit. He's giving you the church. He's giving you the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He's giving you faith to step out in victory. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I, it may look like, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I 
from this day forth, if you know these last week or two have been weeks that have been terrorizing you, maybe you need to turn the television off. I'm serious. Maybe you just need to go put your phone. We, at home, we have a, a charging station, and we say, okay, everybody, all your devices, go and turn them off and put them in the drawer and disconnect from that, from that constant pool that's bringing you into a state of anxiety or worry, okay? Because that is not of God. But if we stay there and allow ourselves to be tormented, then we are not going to know how to fight our battles the way God is calling us to fight our battles. We have a brother here in the church. He's on a, a one-year self-imposed restriction from a phone or television. And, and people were coming this whole week, you know, kind of like, hey, man, did you hear? Did you, did you hear about that? Did you, do you know what the numbers are up to now? And he's just like, nah, I'm not connected to the phone. I have not been watching television. I have built a hedge of protection around my life, around my mind, around my spirit. And I am not going to subscribe to all that nonsense. So we may need to do that, right? In the next couple of weeks, parents are going to need to strategize. What do I do with my kids who are going to be home now from school? Well, praise God. Praise God. Don't surround yourself with things that are going to bring you down. In 2 Kings chapter 6, I'm going to say this quick word, and then I'm going to turn the microphone over to a, a, an anointed, powerful woman of God who's going to pray us out in victory. The prophet Elisha was surrounded and an encampment. And the neighboring nations were looking for the prophet because it was as if everywhere that they went, the, the, the army of God knew how to thwart the enemy. They would cut them off and, and they, would, they would conquer them and defeat them in battle. And they said, we can't do this. How is it that the armies of, of Israel know where we are or how to defeat us every single time? They said, because there is a prophet of God in Israel who knows and hears straight from God. So they said, let's go and find that prophet and let's kill him because he is the key. He is the key to their success. And so the neighboring nations came and found where the prophet Elisha was, was centered in the valley. And Elisha's servant came rushing to the prophet and ripped open the door of the tent and said, My king, my master, my lord, they have surrounded us with horses and chariots, and they are too many for us. We are surrounded. First, this is 2 Kings chapter 6. He said, We are surrounded and we have no chance, and we are going to die today. Elisha paused. He already knew that the servant was coming. And he says, no, my son, go back out. Turn your eyes to the mountain tops that surround the valley and look up. Look around and see that those who are for us are much more than those who are against us. And the servant went out of the tent. He tore open the tent flap. And he opened his eyes. And he saw in the spiritual realm. There were chariots and horses. And angels of warfare. The angel Michael and the angel Gabriel were standing up. Getting ready to fight the army of, of, of the enemies. And fight on behalf of God. And the, the minister of the prophet Elisha looked up and he saw the army of God and it was a glorious vision did you know that God has sent angels to encamp around you and defend you to fight your war to fight with weapons of, of heaven weapons of warfare the Bible says that no weapon formed against you shall prosper you are the people of God you are the children of God and God has given you the sword of the spirit to slay your giants in Jesus name amen Put your hands together, church, and say, He who is for me will deliver me from the hand of the enemy. Hallelujah. People of God, how are we doing? Are we encouraged? Are we encouraged? Amen. If you came in here a little unsure, a little hesitant, with some fear or doubt, I pray that you are encouraged and leave here with praise on your lips.
and worship in your heart. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, so we've been uh, referencing Psalm 91, but I felt that we need to hear the entire scripture so that uh, we are filled with the word of God and we know what God's word says. Amen? Amen. So it says, whoever dwells in the shadow of the Most High, will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and Him who will, I will trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and your rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the coronavirus that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will, you will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If I say, the Lord is my refuge, you make the most high your dwelling. No harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. And this is what God speaks to us. This is what God says. Because he, because you love me, says the Lord, I will rescue you. I will protect you for you acknowledge my name. He, you, will call on me, and I will answer him. I will be with you in trouble. I will deliver you and honor you with long life. I will satisfy you and show you my salvation. Amen. Our Lord is glorious. Let's start off before we go out of these doors, just acknowledging how good our God is, how mighty and excellent is our God. If God is for us, who is against us? Pastor Josh talked about David standing in front of the army of the Philistines while others trembled and were afraid. What are you afraid of? We serve a mighty God. I don't see a giant. I see somebody who is, is blaspheming the name of the Lord and he shall be struck down right now. Pick up your stones and fling them in faith and say, devil, you will not come into my household. Devil, you will not come into my family. I will not be afraid of any sickness or any disease that is out there because I proclaim the blood of Jesus that comes from heaven. The blood that was shed on Calvary on that cross enabled us to have freedom from sickness. So you speak out and you say, Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals, I pray a covering over my family. So at this time, Let's, let's bring up a prayer right now and pray for ourselves and our families. Get your anointing, put it over your doorstep so that the angel of death does not seek it. Because the people of Israel in Egypt, Moses told them, cover your doorsteps in your homes. And at night when the angel of death comes and people are crying and, sh and shrieking, that death will not cross your doorstep. It will not cross your threshold. You get up right now. You speak over your family, call out your family name, each and every child, your spouse, yourself, and say, no sickness will come upon my family. No sickness will come in my household right now. Speak that right now over yourself and over your families. Open up your mouth and pray a prayer of of seeking and beseeching the Lord for his spirit and ministry angels to be covering your households right now because when fear comes fear shuts your mouth it keeps your mouth closed but when you open up your mouth and begin to shout out to the Lord the atmospheres move the spirits of oppression move the spirits of fear move out of the way you speak to that enemy right now you say enemy get out of my head get out of my television get out of my phone right now I do not believe the report of men but I believe the report of the Lord. Let us pray for our neighbors, pray for our co-workers, pray for our friends. We need to be a praying people, calling people by name. Pray for the pray for your family in other countries. That is what we are called to do. Let us not be stopped up in our own fears and our own thoughts right now. Pray for our family, friends, co-workers, neighbor. Pray for your enemy. That's what the Lord says. Pray for your enemy. Cover him. Protect her as well. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Pray for the world right now. Speak against that coronavirus. It will plateau. There will be no more lives taken. We are praying for those that are sick. Let them be healed right now. 
Jehovah Rapha, send your ministering angels and camp those that are sick, those that are suffering. There will be no more lost lives. We are speaking against that virus. It will not continue to climb. The death rate will lower right now in the name of Jesus. Do you believe that? Are you people of faith? Speak against that virus. You will not claim any more lives each and every day. No, I rebuke that. That person will be healed. I, re I come, pray for Italy. Pray for China. Pray for Korea. Pray for all those countries that are suffering, that they will be going to see a shift and a change right now. Pray for our, pray for that shift and change. Pray all over the world. That's what we are called to do. It doesn't just start with us here. Pray for the entire world that Jesus will continually spread his anointing, his blood over our country country, over the nation, over the world, and the healing begins today, right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you're doing right now, today, tomorrow, forevermore. Hallelujah. Be encouraged, people of God. Do not leave these doors in fear, in fear and trembling. Believe in faith and praise. Leave with faith and praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 make you stronger in your faith as a result of what we're going through as a people. Hallelujah. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I sing. It may look like, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. surrounded by him, by his angels, hallelujah, by the Holy Spirit, by his covering, by his anointing, by his favor, by his protection, by his grace, his salvation, his peace, his joy, his love, his mercy, his life, hallelujah, we are surrounded by so much goodness, declare it, Proclaim it, enjoy it, live it in Jesus' name. Go in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You're dismissed, people of God.